Superman is the spirit of classic Americana, to the point that he's even seen as a Boy Scout. And it's a positive thing that Superman is an overwhelming good guy, because he's also a force so unstoppable that without some form of kryptonite, he doesn't lose. But what if you took this incorruptible symbol and broke him? Pushed him so far, he turns those powers on the world. Believe that to save humanity, he would need to rule them all with utter ruthlessness. This is the question asked in the universe of Injustice, an alternate timeline detailing a world where after a horrific tragedy, Superman snaps, and the Man of Steel uses his power to rule the Earth with an iron fist. In all honesty, this series is one of the best DC has released in decades, and I'd highly recommend it. So this video is my way to teach what went down in this alternate scenario. Since there are many events to cover, and some of them aren't really that important, there may be a lot of generalizations. This also means a lot of spoilers. You've been warned. In this universe, Superman's life is pretty much perfect. He's expecting a baby with his wife, Lois Lane. He's looking forward to a happy future. But just like the hopes of a woman's studies major, those dreams are about to come crumbling down. In the middle of the night, Lois Lane is kidnapped at the docks while investigating a tip for the Daily Planet with Jimmy Olsen, photographer extraordinaire. By morning, Superman noticed she'd gone missing. He finds Jimmy's dead body down at the docks alongside a bloody Joker card. The rest of the Justice League is called in to investigate. Scarecrow is found dead in his lab. All his fear toxins, the gas that makes people see their worst fear, was stolen. Joker is tracked to a submarine hiding under the docks, which Superman breaks in, finding Joker and Harley Quinn operating on Lois. He's hit with gas. Doomsday appears. Without a second thought, Superman launches the monster into outer space. That gas was the stolen fear toxin. The sub and the toxin wasn't the only thing Joker had took. He also stole a nuke. A nuke now placed in the center of Metropolis, set to detonate once the heartbeat of Lois Lane stopped. By the time Joker's plan is pieced together, it's too late. Doomsday was Lois. Superman had just killed her. Metropolis explodes and millions die. In the span of two minutes, Superman killed everything, tying him to a normal human life. And he snaps. In his rage, he promptly flies over and kills Joker. So, you think, is Superman just evil now? Driven to insanity? Well, not exactly. Superman is broken, but still thinks he can do good. He feels overwhelming guilt for, well, that, and goes into isolation. In there, his mind begins to warp. He relates any conflict to his own personal tragedy, how violence ruins countless lives every day. He never wants anybody to feel the sense of loss from such destruction, and now has a new purpose. Traditionally, Superman never forced his will on people. He could have, but instead he just protected them, letting them do their own thing. Except for in Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, we don't talk about that, no. Now, he doesn't care about anything else but this goal. Nobody else is strong enough to do anything. In minutes, he topples a dictator, bringing a bloody civil war to an immediate end. He announces to the world, stop your fighting, or I will make you. This means everybody, even the United States, fall on the line. The rest of the Justice League is shocked, but most actually signed with him. He saved the world many times. He's their friend, an ally, and even if those actions are a bit extreme, they still are with the best intentions, and they prevent conflict. Others immediately question this. Batman did just see Joker get his chest punched through by soups, and remember that moral to never kill. Except for Snyder Batman, but we don't talk about that either. Batman remains uncorrupted, believing that violence is horrible, but people should be free to choose their own path. If Clark is bringing peace by fear, he's nothing more than a tyrant. Even if the storyline of Injustice may get muddled, this is the core ideological conflict. How far should Superman go to stop innocent lives from being lost? Is ruling by fear good if people stop fighting? Keep that in mind. Most countries don't react too well being told not to fight. Some stuff happens with Atlantis, the Kraken is awoken, Aquaman leaves. There, you're welcome Aquaman fan, I talked about him. Even if you stop war, the world is still violent. Crime happens. To Clark, Batman's code kept Joker alive all these years. Had he just killed Joker, millions wouldn't have died, including his family. So he's done with mercy. Focuses his sights on the center of all Gotham criminals 
Arkham. He decides all criminals need to be taken someplace where they'll never get out. This immediately causes rifts inside the Bat family. Batman, Nightwing, and Robin. Young Robin, Damian Wayne, agrees with Superman. He believes his dad has been far too merciful. Criminals shouldn't be protected only to commit crimes again. Let Superman do whatever he wants. Superman's ideas begin normalizing this ruthless mindset, and it's easy for Damien to agree with it. Batman, though, never shakes his morals. This won't stop at criminals. Where is that line drawn? A showdown occurs in Arkham, Batman and Nightwing standing against the Justice League, with Robin at their side. Chaos erupts, prisoners escape, fighting occurs. Robin throws his baton at Nightwing, a split-second accident. Nightwing loses his balance and breaks his neck on a rock. He dies. Whoops. This single act changes the relationship between the father and son forever. Damien killed Batman's closest thing to a second son. The rift between the two grows. Robin living with the guilt of killing Dick Grayson, and Batman pushing him away, sending Robin on the path of being a Superman loyalist. Superman's change alienated former friends. Batman forms an underground resistance, another Justice League, who stands against Superman. Green Arrow, Huntress, Martian Manhunter, Captain Adam, Harley Quinn, you get the point. Meanwhile, in the actual Justice League, Lex Luthor develops a pill allowing Superman's followers to have his powers. Wait, Lex Luthor? Oh yeah. In this timeline, Lex was never enemies with Superman. They're lifelong friends. The pill that Lex creates may not give people the full power of Superman, but allows them to emulate some of his abilities. Now, Batman being Batman found out about this. He had his own spy, Martian Manhunter, in the Red Base the entire time. Robin discovered this and notifies Superman that the spy is in the base. Superman tells the world Bruce Wayne is Batman. As things heat up, Batman knows that the pill and replicating its formula is the only way the Resistance has a fighting chance. That pill is in the Fortress of Solitude. So, to distract Superman, the United States sends forces to Korea. Remember, Superman hates war, but it was just a ruse so Batman's team could get into the fortress, and, uh-oh, Superman's parents are there, and just in time for him to arrive back. He sees Batman with his parents, and believes the government, and Batman, is trying to take his family as hostages. He becomes furious. Green Arrow shoots an arrow with the pill on it to the survivors on the outside, before being beat to death by an enraged Superman. But Green Arrow sacrificed himself for a noble cause. Now, Batman's resistance has a fighting chance. Knowing his power will be challenged, Superman declares a new global state, the regime. So, there was a lot of filler as well that didn't really tie into the games, so I'm sorry if I vastly oversimplify a lot of things for the sake of time. Seeing an opportunity, Sinestro becomes allies with Superman's regime. Hal Jordan helps his enemy Sinestro and Superman as the entire Green Lantern Corps all come to dispose of the tyrant. A giant war erupts. Hal loses his ring for betraying his own kind, but gains a fancy yellow ring for fighting alongside Sinestro. So does Superman. The Sinestro Corps feeds off fear, and by using the fear of an entire planet, Superman kills most of the Green Lantern Corps. I'm going to skip over a lot of filler. Magic exists. Raven is captured by it. Constantine comes along. Deadman shows up. Nightwing, Dick Grayson, comes back as the new Deadman. Superman stops being a Yellow Lantern. Trigon shows up. Mr. Myth the Pitaez shows up. Reality begins tearing apart. Dr. Fate zaps them away. Detective Chip lost his hat. Constantine says, that was my plan all along. Nothing really came from that. Meanwhile, Olympic gods like Zeus are angry and come down. They leave. Nothing from that either. Flash forward, it's been five years since Metropolis exploded. Now we're getting back to the plot. Superman is now a bitter shadow of his former self. Simply because he lost his family, he selfishly claimed many more lives. Martian Manhunter, Black Canary, Green Arrow. He's given up on being nothing less than a vindictive despot. He doesn't even put up an image anymore. Simply says that the people of Earth must obey his rule. The nations must obey. No freedom of speech. No nukes. No resistance. Joker ironically becomes a figurehead of rebellion. Even though he rules all, Superman is at his weakest, afraid of losing power. It's turned him petty, even having Alfred Pennyworth secretly assassinated simply for insulting his rule. But he knows he's right. Damian Wayne has grown up in conflict. Now he's taken on the Nightwing mantle. He doesn't have the ideology of his father. 
He's been shaped by the merciless ideas of Superman. Criminals must be met with immediate death. And death is now far too common. Superman views the friends that he has left as simply soldiers, and it's costing him allies, including Lex Luthor, who begins working with Batman. Lex believes that the only people that can defeat Superman is alternate versions of themselves. They have to bring them through the multiverse. The multiverse is basically all the parallel universes within DC. But to get such a machine to work, they have to steal a mother box, hiring Deathstroke, who's all too happy to get out of retirement. He sends back the schematics, but not before being captured. Before Superman can stop them, the machine goes off, transporting the alternate versions of themselves into this universe, thus beginning the plot of the Injustice game. I think Injustice works because it brings out the complex questions that can come from power. At what point does safety start and infringing on rights begin? It brings another dynamic to the superhero story. Superman's road to hell started with good intentions, to end conflict. But as his mental health kept deteriorating, he kept moving the goalposts and became the tyrant Batman warned about. Superman may be depicted as a god at times, but he's still simply a man. Even if he physically cannot be hurt, his mind was always vulnerable. Joker saw this, and as he said, it was far too easy. As a DC fan and a fan of alternate history, I couldn't help but do a video about this. It's a simple overview for people who haven't searched it out. And speaking of Superman, even though he's beating Oliver Queen to death, he's still clean shaven. So what's your excuse? Special thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. With all the issues in my life, razors usually are not at the top of my mind. When they are, it's usually when I get home and remember that I didn't get any. Thus, I would go through the cycles of using doll razors rather than have to go out to the store far too often. To my deepest surprise, Dollar Shave Club has been incredibly useful. I mean, I never really cared about my razors until I started using Dollar Shave Club. It was a smart choice, because instead of just reusing doll razors or having to get overly expensive ones, they send me multiple quality razors right to my door every month and is giving me a much better shaving experience. Right now, for a limited time, if you use my URL, www.dollarshaveclub.com slash althistory, or click on the link in the description, new members get their first month of the executive razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver shave butter for only $5 with free shipping. That's a $15 value for five bucks, and after that, the razors are just a few bucks a month. In your first month box, you get a solid handle, four cartridges, and a tube of their shave butter. To have a service that drops off razors I know are quality consistently every month is just more satisfying than I ever thought it would be. It's something you don't think about until you have it. So, what are you waiting for? Use my URL www.dollarshaveclub.com slash allhistory or click on the link in the description and get your first month of the executive razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver shave butter for only $5 today.